How many of you were born 1988 and earlier? Okay, how many were born after 88? All right, yeah, okay. So, I want to tell you a couple stories. I've been attending the annual meeting of the American Education Research Association for 31 years now. And this is a place where the professors of education, the doctoral students, the master's degree students, the administrators, they go to share research, right? It's supposed to be all about kids learning how to write, you know, read, write, and do arithmetic, of course, right? You'd be amazed at what goes on there. So just this year, I was in Toronto, Canada, and this professor of science education, that's in what my PhD is, science education. So I had to go listen to this, right? She's talking about the crayfish activity where elementary kids, you know, get out a live crayfish. And you look at the swimmerettes and you look at the carapace and you look at the anatomy and physiology and the kids are engaged and that's all great, right? Here's the problem according to Dr. Kristen Kunkel. We need to, quote, introduce sexuality back into the science curriculum, close quote. The elementary school science should put much more focus on the non-binary and the non-heteronormative nature of reality. Okay? I'll just give you another one. One more story. I could give you 40 of these stories. Querying fourth graders, year 2015, annual meeting of the American Education Research Association. I went to the meeting, and I was looking for a name tag of a male... But, or I was looking for a female name, I think. I got there, the presentation that was a, the other name, whatever, I can't remember, you know how that is. And I was listening, I thought, I think I get it. This is a transgender professor, which isn't the big deal. But then think about what he, she is promoting. Going into fourth grade classrooms by research to change them, to queer them. That means to get these fourth graders to question everything that mom and dad have taught them, that their church has taught them, that whatever groups they're in have taught them and challenged those values and beliefs. He, she said, quote, it is about transforming the social in order to achieve increased support for those who identify as lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer questioning, intersex and asexual, LGBTQIA, but it is equally about dismantling misogyny, homophobia, and transphobia so that all people, and I put in brackets including 10-year-olds in public state schools, end bracket, regardless of their sexual or gender identity, so that they can be free. Now, these stories, I could tell you a lot of them, but I want to be with you five hours. I don't get to do that. That could be the stick that beats you into getting out of public schools, right? So how about the best new Mustang, the best new pickup truck, the best new Corvette, and I'm going to try to sell you something. I'm going to try to sell you homeschooling. 78% you know, imagine a TV, TV commercial. 78% of the 45 peer-reviewed studies found that the homeschooled students or graduates performed significantly better than their conventional institutional school peers in terms of academic achievement, social and emotional development, and success in adulthood, including college. Or, it's so popular, you should homeschool. It's grown from almost zero to over two million kids today. So now you need to get excited. That's the little carrot I can get you into homeschooling, right? But I want to be more serious than that, because that's the wrong motive. Why don't we Christians just tell horror stories? Let's argue all day long. A little science, a little this, a little that, a little endocrinology. No offense to any other speakers. Let's just argue and debate, right? Let's, let's get a, pull out another study. Let's pull out another logical argument with the professors of education and, and all these things and make claims and counterclaims about, oh, if we just had more school choice, the test scores would go up, right? Then we could compete with Norway. How does that sound? Or if you would just homeschool your kids, on average, they'd be 15 to 30 percentile points higher on standardized tests than kids in the public schools. Oh, but my public school is really good. Our test scores are higher. We're in one of these school districts where everybody's rich and they have the best teachers. Let's do that for 50 more years, okay? But first of all, I'm going to assume because you're here in a church building that most of you are Christians, that most of you say, I'm born again, I was regenerated by God, and I believe that the Word of God, the Bible, is from God. So I'm a researcher, but you know, I say, well, Brian Ray is supposed to talk about research. He does all these statistics and analyses and writes in journals. I'll get to that, okay? Because that's part of what Gina wanted me to do, so I'm going to get to that. But I'm going to start with what I believe is more important. 
So I want you to ask, this is your first test question. I'm only going to give you two test questions today. One, oh, there's the timer. I love having a timer. Yeah. Wow, I still have 20, I still have 24 and a half minutes. Okay, I can slow down. Test question one, who should be teaching, training, and indoctrinating the children of Christians? Okay, A, the state, the civil government, B, the parents, C, the children's peers, D, a private association you choose, E, parents with with the support of their local church, or other. Okay, so let's keep going. Who shall be the primary authority and the main influencer and guide regarding a child's education? And I'm so proud of this church. I have never been invited to a church to do this, ever. And I've been speaking for 35 years at conferences. I'm, I'm amazed. I just like, because what, he, what this guy says is kind of scary to a lot of churches. So you guys, I don't know, but this is amazing here. I'm amazed at your church. Okay, so God says. A lot of us go, what does the Bible say? I'm going to put right in front of that, God says. It's not the Bible. It's not some vague, weird, abstract book over there. God says, For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. How many fathers in here? Would you raise your hands? That's excellent. And this goes for moms too. You know that. God says, Hear, my children, the instruction of a father and give attention to no understanding in Proverbs 4.1. God says, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart, Christian. You, mom and dad, shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise, Deuteronomy 6. That is one of the Jews' biggest, greatest, most important. I forget what they call that passage. It's an extremely important one. And this is to you too, because if you're a Christian, you're a part of the true Israel, are you not? God says, a pupil is not above his teacher, but everyone after he's been fully trained will be like his teacher, Jesus said. When your child is in the government schools, His or her teacher is the completeness of that, all of that curriculum, all of those peers, all of the pornography he or she is showing on cell phones in the hallways, everything that happens on the school bus, that is your child's teacher. And Jesus said, what will your child become like? So Jesus said. God says, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Now, a lot of us will stop there, go, yeah, yeah, the parents, the parents. A lot, I heard a lot of you say, it's the parents, right? But then there's this little out we have as Christians. But since I'm in charge and I have the authority, then don't I have the authority to delegate it to somebody else? This is where I'm going to push you a little harder. And some of you looked out at the table and you saw a book called Abolition, didn't you? A black book there. The question is, not only what does God say you should do, but it also is what should you not do? Aren't there some things in the Bible about don't commit adultery? Like We talk about grace, but God gave us some rules too, didn't he? Like this is my order. My order is a man and a woman married forever for sexual relations, period. That's what he said, right? So he gives us what we should do, that's prescription, and he also gives us proscription, don't do. Now let's look at this one. Test question two, who shall not be teaching, training, and indoctrinating the children of Christians? A, you have multiple choice here, the state, civil government, B, parents, C, the children's peers, D, a private association, E, parents with the support of their church. F, A, and C, G, A, C, and D, H, other. <laughs> okay, I know, you're, you're hungry, but, but you got the point. I think you got the point, right? So who shall not be educating, indoctrinating, and having major influence over your child 
if you're a Christian dad and mom? This is a serious question. This part right here is where almost no church leaders want to go. So thank you, church leaders, for letting me talk about it. They're afraid to talk about this. And you can look at it, and I want you to go study the word yourself, okay? Don't just say, well, Brian said, so I want you to go study. It's on your heads. God says foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. So just get that in your heads for a minute. Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. God says, whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. When your child is around fools all day, what's going to happen? God says, and he also spoke a parable to them. A blind man cannot lead, guide a blind man, can he? Will they not both fall into a pit? If the teachers in a school and the people who create curriculum, and the professors who teach the teachers who teach in the schools, and I just told you about them, are blind, where are they leading your children? Into a pit. God says, a pupil is not above his teacher. I used this in the earlier section, but it applies here too. A pupil is not above his teacher, but everyone after he's been fully trained will be like his teacher, for better or for worse. God says, but whoever, fathers, mothers, whoever causes one of these little ones to believe in me to sin, and other translations say put a stumbling block in front of them, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. What are you doing when you send your child someplace where it's led by fools and blind people and curriculum that's full of all kinds of things that you now know about if you didn't know before. Are you responsible, dads? I'm going to ask a lot of questions today. God says, Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers, for what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? What accord has Christ with Belial? Or what portion does a believer share with an unbeliever? What agreement has a temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God, as God said... Isn't this interesting now? Because a lot of you go, well, you just quoted Old Testament stuff. Well, I'm reading New Testament stuff to you now too. But isn't this fun in this passage that God said, I'm going to put Old Testament with New Testament. And I'm going to affirm to you that everything I said thousands of years ago applies now when the New Testament was written. For we are the temple of the living God, as God said, I will make my dwelling among them and walk among them, and I will be their God. And they, that's you if you're a Christian, shall be my people. Therefore, go out from their midst and be separate from them, says the Lord, and touch no unclean thing. Then I will welcome you, and I will be a father to you, and you shall be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. I'd like you to try to apply this to what you think of in the world, but not of the world, and your children. And remember, that's a huge difference a saved, born-again, regenerated Christian, maybe who's 30 years old or 50 years old, and a 5-year-old who's not saved, or a 12-year-old who's saved and is not yet ready to stand on his own, going out two by two to teach people about Jesus. The battle for children's minds and hearts is, is millennia old. This is not a new thing. You know, we think this is so new, like in California public schools or Oregon public schools, where I'm from, or Oklahoma public. This is, this is old stuff. This is not new. It's old, old, old. Plato, 400 BC. That's 2,400 and what years ago? 19 years ago? Did, how did I do? I don't know. 1922 in Oregon, my state. It was mandatory. You had to attend government-controlled schools. Compulsory force of law. It went all the way to the Supreme Court, and that failed. Thank God for that. That was in Oregon. All children had to go to government schools. 1938, Hitler and the Nazis banned home education in Germany. 1945, Mao Zedong hates home education, and all children will be in government-controlled schools. 1850, Horace Mound and and the founders of the U.S. public schools take those dirty Irish Catholic immigrants and all these people and form them and mold them into a good American. 
whatever that is, right? What's a good American today? You've heard about it in all kinds of presentations. Today's Cuba jailing a pastor and his wife for home educating their children. Today's China cracking down, stomping out, crushing private education and home-based education. They hate it. Today's Germany still bans home education. Today's various professors, I read these journal articles, some of them want to ban private education, not just homeschooling, ban Roman Catholic education, ban Lutheran schooling, ban Montessori, ban, ban it all so that they can control what goes into kids' hearts and minds. There's some recent roots of, of this, and it's, it's a lot of, how many of you were ever certified teachers? I, I was. Okay, remember Bloom's taxonomies and all that stuff? It's, it's just so obvious. We recognize the point of view that truth and knowledge are only relative and there are no hard and fast truths which exist for all time and all places. Many, many tens of thousands of us have been taught this stuff at the universities to be teachers in America. Maybe millions, probably millions. Quote, in fact, a large part of what we call good teaching is the teacher's ability to attain affective objectives through challenging the students' fixed beliefs and getting them to discuss the issues I, th this is not new. For 35 years, science educators, that's my field, they've been going into classrooms and doing experiments on kids to change their values and beliefs to ignore their parents and ignore their pastors and church leaders about all kinds of things. This is not new. You guys, you have to know this. You need to know this. But alert Christians and conservatives have been warning us all along. In the late 1800s, there were Christians who fought government-controlled schooling. In 1963, Rush Dooney wrote an amazing book. If any of you are interested in reading this, this is one of the best books ever. He predicted everything that's going on right now in American public schools and said, don't use them. Don't put your children in them. That was in 1963. 1989, Adam Stein and Wheeler wrote, Oh, Who Owns the Children? 1992, Dr. Paul Lindstrom of Christian Liberty Academy warned everybody, don't use the public schools. 1997, Richard Little Bear Wheeler wrote the book, Warning Public Schools Aren't for Christians. 2002, some of you know this. I listened to it. I transcribed it. This was so amazing because I kept thinking, Dr. Dobson, when are you going to say it? Dr. Dobson, when are you going to say it? Some of us would write him. Finally, in 2002, quote, I've been on the air with Focus on the Family for 25 years. It's the first time I've said this. If I had a child there, school age, I wouldn't put that youngster in the public schools. But given the fact that in every classroom in the state here, for 13 public school years, they're being taught homosexual propaganda and these other politically correct postmodern views. I think it's time to get our kids out, and I'm going to get hit for saying that. He finally said it 17 years ago. It was incredible. Three years, four years ago, Dr. Albert Moeller, president of the humongous theological seminary, I couldn't believe it because church leaders almost never say this kind of thing publicly. He said it. Quote, this was at a conference where they were discussing research I'd just done. Quote, all I'm telling you is now, now, for, all, for most Americans, fast forward 30 years, he was talking about today in, in his talk, it is delivering your children to Moloch to put them in public school in terms of the effect upon them. Go study Moloch, okay? 2019, Monday, Rush Limbaugh, quote, I think it's becoming very apparent to millennial parents, parents of millennial kids, their kids are struggling in the wretched, horrible circumstances of the public school system. One of the answers to this mess, and he was kind of making fun of the parents who just whine, <clears throat> what's happening to our children is homeschooling. It's not just conservatives and Christian-oriented people who are choosing to pull children out of public schools. Look, it's more complicated than I have to get into now, unquote. That was Monday. I've never heard him say that before. I've only heard a few big-name talk show people say that. So what's going on? I'm hoping that if nothing else, and I'm going to give you the research, don't, don't worry, I'm going to give you the research, but this is the deal, and I'm trying to think of how to say this politely, because I get really frustrated, and my energy gets all pent up, and I get tired of hearing things, and I get tired of church leaders discussing things. Let's discuss it for another five years, and let's try to deal with the problem again, and oh, no, look, look, oh, they're making boys and girls go to the same bathroom. So what are we going to do? Oh, let's go down and argue about it. Let's fight and let's try to change the law. All the while, you see that iceberg? The part I just mocked, I hope it was, I hope it was a you know, respectful mocking. That's the little bit of the iceberg above the water, moms and dads. Fathers, that's the tip of the iceberg. 
And the rest of it, some say, I looked it up once, it's about 87% or something like that under the water. All day long, every day, six hours per day, plus a bus ride if you have a bus ride. That chunk underneath is savaging, ravaging, bumping against, scraping, mauling, wrecking your child's mind and heart. Because there are all kinds of other things you're not thinking about. And all the talk shows and the conservatives and the Christians, oh, let's look at that horrible thing that happened. It's the tip of the iceberg. All day long, those professors and their teachers they taught, who I told you about, they're seeping the, the little details and the unseen into your child's mind and heart. And every single time one of us Christians sends our child there, you're saying, go there, Billy. They're the experts. I trust them. I sent you there. They're smart. Pay attention. Be respectful. Submit. Isn't that bizarre? And then we'll get them home and say, now let's fix it all. Is there something a little bit crazy about that? Is there something a little bit strange about that? This is why I want 10 hours with you. <laughs> but they got to be salt and light there, Brian. Jesus said that, didn't he? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Salt and light? Your five-year-old? I want to ask you seriously right now. Do you know, are you confident your five-year-old is born again, regenerated, saved by the Lord of the universe? Most of you don't even know. Betsy and I have raised eight children. I know something about this. And then, I'm going to go ahead and lay on the conviction now. The dad tells me that. Well, it's got to be salt and light. I go, okay, dad. What kind of work do you do? Well, I'm a welder. How many guys are in your shop welders? There's seven. When was the last time you took one of them to coffee and explained the gospel to them? It's like, it's been a long time. When was the last time you didn't talk at a nasty, dirty joke? It's been a long time. It's like, we got to be honest with ourselves. So what's happening? I don't even like the H word, homeschooling. <laughs> I, I've tried to say it since parent-led, home-based discipleship. Is it right in front of us? Is it in the Old Testament? Is it in the New Testament? Did Martin Luther write about it? Yes, he did, by the way. The Puritans in colonial America, some people go, oh, they had schools. No, they didn't. They home-educated their children. And then people say, oh, that's because they were primitive and they, they lived in the country and they're raising cows and growing corn. No, when they lived in towns and villages where they had smart people, they home-educated their children and did not school them because they read the Bible. Is it the biblically normative and very accessible approach a parent-led home-based private-funded education schooling discipleship with the support of your local church? Notice I didn't say home education tied to mommy's apron strings until he's 30 years old and weird and, you know, not dependent on anybody else. I didn't say that. I didn't say you can't be in co-ops. I didn't say, you know, I didn't say anything about that. It's breaking out and it's on the move all over the world. And old, old practice is breaking out again. I was at the Global Home Education Conference in, what's the big... Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, a few years ago. The whole global home education conference was in, what's, what's the big, 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 big city? Moscow, in Russia, right? That was two springs ago. I'm going to be one with Betsy in two months in South Africa, oriented toward all the Africans, and then two years from now in the Philippines. It's breaking out, back, coming back all over the world, and some people absolutely hate it. Hate, hate, hate hate it. The demographics in the U.S. are broadening all over the place. People who don't like it, they try to portray it as rich, white Christians. Guess what? Don't quote this statistic, but I think I'm close. About 40% of U.S. homeschoolers are not white Anglo today. And they're pagans, Muslims, Mormons, Jews, agnostics, atheists, Christians, home educating their children. Because they all have a little glimpse of what's happening. Okay, so the research in five minutes. <laughs> On average, home-educated children score 15 to 30 percentile points above the public school on tests. 
11 out of 14, that's 78% of peer-reviewed studies show that they perform higher on academic achievement. Low and high income families are doing above average on test scores. Low and high parent education families are doing better on test scores. Various skin colors, I don't even believe in certain terms, and ethnicities are above average when they're home educated. I did the only one of its kind study on African American homeschool families. The black children homeschooled not only do way better than their black public school peers, get this, the black homeschool kids do better than white kids in public schools. But do you think the NAACP wanted to talk to me about it? No. Did the National Education Association want to talk about it? No. What about socialization? How many of you have asked that question? It drives homeschoolers nuts. You know what? What about socialization? And a lot of homeschoolers say, that's exactly why we homeschool our children, because <laughs> we don't want the socialization of what's happening in government schools. 87% of peer-reviewed studies show that the homeschool did statistically better in terms of social and emotional development. That's not a study by me. That's a review of studies by me in a peer-reviewed journal. What about success in college and adulthood in general? 11 out of 16, that's 69% of the studies, show that the home-educated kids do better statistically than those who went to conventional schools. So again, that's like the sales pitch, but I don't want to do a sales pitch. I want you, if you're a Christian, to read God's word and get honest with yourselves. That's, that's what I want. So what are the costs and benefits if you decide to continue homeschooling your child who was always homeschooled from birth, right? But then a lot of you said, I'm opting in to government-run indoctrination. I don't, do I get to be blunt with you? I'm going to go home after this. <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'll be out there. I'll, you can come and throw tomatoes at me. What are the costs and benefits? Honesty with God's word, your child's heart, soul, and mind. By the way, I do not think, just for the record, I do not believe that like Keith Green, the musician, said, that tells you when I got saved. He said, just because you go to... McDonald's doesn't make you a hamburger. And just because you go to church doesn't make you a Christian. And I add, and just because you homeschool does not save your children. You home educate if you believe it's biblically normative and or commanded. That's why you home educate. You don't home educate to get high test scores. What are the other costs and benefits? Trusting God. Casting away fear and excuses being deaf to the cult of professionalism that tells you you're inept. Mom, are you a husband and wife? You guys don't know what you're doing. You're inept. You haven't been trained by those professors I taught you about. You don't have a government-approved teaching license. You can't educate your children. You're dummies. That's the, that's the message of the culture. That's the message. It's a lie. It's an absolute lie. If biblically it's true what I'm implying, then that's, a, that's an evil lie. And I have been a professor of education, and I did not teach people that. It means depending on church friends and not being a lone ranger. It means foregoing one or one half of a potential income. It means having a few of your sweet coffee drinks, living more frugally. It means a whole $400 to $600 per child per year. Some homeschoolers homeschool on almost zero, and some spend thousands of dollars. It means joy in learning with your children, just getting to be with them during the day. And you say... That sounds horrible. Well, then God, God wants to change you, doesn't he? That's, that's a true test right there. If you say that sounds horrible or I'm not patient enough, that's God saying you need to change. I'm, I, I, I only have 30 minutes. I got to just tell you. How do you get started? And, and okay, go to Chi of California to go to hslda.org. Go to nheri.org, that's us. Visit our table out there. And I'm just going to tell you my opinion. Don't go to the public tax-funded charter schools. Okay, I'm going to end right here. Wow, I'm doing pretty good. Let parents decide, question mark? This is the, this is the end. And I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it because I am at the end. I'm going to read it because I want to say it right and I don't want to be misquoted. Are you going to opt your child out of parent-led home-based education? Because that's how they all start, from birth. And willingly put him or her under the teaching, training, and indoctrination. That's the 90% of the iceberg. In statist, other God's schools. Has God already told you via his word? Not some mystical writing on the wall, scientific debate, 
feeling or conviction and decided, yea, has God commanded who should be teaching, training, and indoctrinating, and nurturing your child's mind, emotions, heart, and soul on a daily basis, when he or she awakens, walks along the way of life and learning, eats at your breakfast, lunch, and supper table, and lies down at night to the praise and glory of our Lord Jesus? Is the answer you, the parents, with the help of your church and freely chosen friends who live to glorify the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Or does God tell you to put your child under a system and individuals that are funded by the forced redistribution of wealth and whose purpose is not to lift up the name of Christ and not to point the world to Jesus, but to aim your child at self, autonomy, metaphysical naturalism, hedonism, statism, socialism, LGBTQIAism, critical theory, neo-Marxism, today's American dream, choice to murder babies in the womb, and all other manner of godless philosophies? That was one sentence. <laughs> what is there to decide? May our Lord bless you. Amen.